In this presentation, the application of the above elbow circular cast will be demonstrated. In general, the above elbow circular cast is applied after reducing a forearm fracture in order to maintain the reduction and prevent rotation of the forearm. The objective of the exercise is to show the application of the above elbow circular cast, a well-molded circular cast that will maintain reduction after a forearm fracture. The above elbow circular cast is indicated for isolated mid-shaft or distal ulna fractures, radius and ulna fractures in children, and undisplaced radius and ulna fractures in adults. In these x-rays, the AP and lateral views of a displaced fracture of the radius and ulna in a child are shown. The correct method of reduction is illustrated in this diagram. Three-point pressure is used to maintain the reduction. To apply the above elbow circular cast, the following materials are needed. A stockinette or tubular gauze bandage. Cotton wool, 100 millimeters wide, will be used as undercast padding. For children, a width of 75 millimeters is sufficient. Scissors. Plaster of Paris bandage, which is available in rolls of varying widths. And water or another wetting agent. The water should be tepid or lukewarm with an ideal temperature of between 22 and 25 degrees Celsius. It should be noted that colder water or a bandage that is wetter will allow for an increased working time, while warmer water or a bandage that is drier reduces the working time. The patient should be seated and use the uninjured arm to support the injured arm, as shown here. The distal border is located at the distal palmar crease so that the patient is still able to flex the MP joints to 90 degrees. The elbow is flexed to 90 degrees. An easy landmark for the proximal border is the deltoid insertion. To begin, a stockinette is applied and cut slightly longer than the final cast will be, with a small opening for the thumb. The cotton wool is used for undercast padding. A slit is cut in the cotton wool for the first web space. Beginning distally, the cotton wool is gently wound around the forearm, giving an overlap of 50%. The overlap creates a double layer of padding. The edge of the cotton wool should not cut into the crease of the elbow, so the elbow is wrapped as demonstrated here. The cotton wool extends slightly beyond the planned length of the cast so that the ends of the cast will be padded. Three pieces of cotton wool are used to pad the area above the elbow, the bony prominences of the olecranon, and the condyles of the humerus.
The plaster bandage is dipped in the water. The application of the plaster bandage begins with one complete turn around the wrist. It is then passed through the first web space and continues proximally around the forearm in the same manner as the cotton wool, with an overlap of 50%, making sure that the edge does not cut into the crease of the elbow. To ensure sufficient strength, the cast should be constructed as a whole. At the ends of the cast, a slight amount of cotton wool and stockinette should remain uncovered. A second plaster bandage is applied beginning where the first ended, giving an overlap of 50%. It should be noted that although four layers of plaster bandage have now been applied, the shininess of the material indicates that the cast is still too soft to mold to the desired shape. While waiting for the initial set of the plaster, the stockinette can be folded over at the ends and around the thumb. Although the plaster is now becoming dull, indicating that it's begun to set, it's still too soft to mold. At this time, a third plaster bandage is applied in the same manner as the second, to secure the loose ends of the stockinette and ensure uniform thickness of the cast. The plaster roll should remain in contact with the cast while the cast is formed, to avoid over-tightening, as demonstrated here. The plaster is smoothed in the same direction as the bandage to ensure integration of the different layers. This unity results in a stronger cast and prevents an onion skin effect between the different layers of plaster. A fairly firm circular motion of both hands forms the plaster into an oval shape. Smoothing the plaster lengthwise forces the plaster out of the bandage and should be avoided. The Palmer plaster is now molded to fit the hand. The exercises for the patient may now be explained and demonstrated. The application of the above elbow circular cast is now complete. A sling may be provided to support the weight of the cast.